Hello and welcome to Bloomberg Quint. I have with me Paul Scher, the Chief Global Economist at S&P Rating Services. Paul, thank you so much for speaking with us. Pleasure. Um, this year, the conversation is focused entirely on the US and the UK. You've got all the uncertainty, uncertainties around the Trump presidency and then the Brexit issue as well. But interestingly enough, um, when you talk to business leaders, uh, their confidence in growth seems to lie in both these countries. How do you assess the economic outlook for both of these countries and therefore what it means for the global economy? Mm. Well, I think they, they are the two kind of uh, key issues at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. How is the Trump administration going to find its feet? What does that mean for US growth and then for global growth? And then, of course, the Brexit uh, historic uh, developments uh, will be very important uh, issue to watch this year. In terms of growth, we do think gro uh, the, the Trump uh, policy mix is essentially pro-business and pro-growth. Mm. Supply-side reforms, deregulation, tax reform, and then on the on the uh, demand side, of course, uh, relying more on fiscal stimulus, uh, you know, fairly ambitious plans for a, a big infrastructure program. That will take some time to come through, but it's basically pro-business, pro-growth, and the markets have taken it uh, in, that, in that way. Of course, there is one area of concern there, which is around trade, yes. um, and we'll have to wait and see how that plays out. Certainly, uh, if protectionism uh, and trade wars uh, start to become the order of the day, that's obviously a different, uh, a different issue. What is your expectation on that front? Well, I think um, I think what Mr. Trump and the administration is really aiming for is to a little bit of a, a reset button uh, on the trade front, really saying, look, the US is in favor of free trade, but free trade means free trade in a symmetric way. That is, we'll open our markets, we'll keep our markets open, but we expect our trading partners to do likewise as well. So a little bit of a, a rebalancing in a sense of, of the US not being perhaps as generous in terms of we'll open our markets regardless of what, say, the emerging markets do. So there's a little bit of a reset there. But going back to the other issue on the UK, um, we do think growth will be certainly a little bit lower in the UK uh, because of the uncertainty that Brexit negotiations will engender. But that's more of a chronic a drag uh, on growth uh, than something that would tip the economy into recession. Okay. Uh, coming back to the US for just a brief second, do you expect that, you know, I mean, he's been making comments and we've seen some automakers in the U.S., you know, change their plans about setting up factories or facilities outside the U.S. Um, you expect a large amount of both portfolio fund flow, given what the Fed's doing, the in increase in interest rates, the stronger dollar, as well as a lot of foreign direct investment or even American corporations now investing in America as opposed to elsewhere in the world. So a lot more money coming back to the U.S.? Yeah. I wouldn't, I'm, I'm not sure how much that will you know, necessarily happen at the end of the day. I mean, certainly um, there will be upward strength on the dollar, and that's going to cause some uh, issues for the Fed as well. Yes. Um, maybe that will take some of the pressure off the Fed to hike interest rates if the dollar does the, the monetary, ti monetary tightening for it. But I think that the key thrust of the Trump administration is really to uh, reinvigorate the domestic economy, and particularly you know, in the industrial heartland. Now, it might be difficult to bring jobs back to the industrial heartland that have been lost. There have been changes in competitiveness. And if the dollar strengthens, uh, that will actually make it even more of an uphill battle. Uh, but you do have the infrastructure spending, deregulation uh, coming through. So it may, we may be looking the next, you know, sitting here in two years' time saying, well, actually, those jobs didn't come back. But other jobs were generated in the economy. And therefore, in some sense, um, you know, people are giving... Uh, the Trump administration a, a pass mm. because they got the economy growing at a faster rate. But the ability to sort of micromanage the internal structure of an economy, a market oriented economy like the United States, um, yeah, that's quite doubtful. And maybe the rhetoric uh, is running ahead of the potential reality there. What, what do you make the year will hold for currencies? I think everybody is, is sort of grappling with what a stronger dollar will mean um, and what that will mean for emerging market currencies. And we've had a return in commodity prices over the last year, year and a half now. Um, that too will worry oil importers like India. So what's your outlook on currencies and commodities? Mm. Well, I, again, there's always something to worry about in the markets. Mm. If you remember a couple of years ago when uh, we had all the quantitative easing from the Fed, uh, the dollar was weakening, you know, it was all about upward pressure on emerging market currencies and how would they cope with that. Now the pendulum seems to have switched, uh, swung in the other direction and the concern is the reverse. I mean, there are some con concerns about, you know, if the dollar were to strengthen too much um, and, you know, there's a lot of corporate debt uh, in emerging market yes. land that's, uh, that's, that's in, dollar in dollar denominated. Yes. So that would cause some stresses in the system. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, markets are 
markets and they will uh, they will move in response to a whole host of factors but uh, you know mr trump seems to be breaking uh, every rule in the book so far and now we have a president elect who's uh, talking very much you know about the strong dollar being a problem so this will be a, a problem in the sense that um you know i'm not sure how sort of comfortable mr trump is uh, in this sort of international market environment. Markets can be very fickle um, and um, don't always uh, toe the line <laughs> of what the politicians or the policy makers uh, want them to do. Okay, fair enough. Uh, emerging economies, I know in India we're concerned about slightly slower growth than we had anticipated last year and this year. And then we had the demonetization mm. impact. What did you make of that and whether you've been able to read what impact that mm. will have on the Indian economy? Right. Well, there were two shocks on uh, <laughs> Tuesday, November the 8th, uh, one from the US and one from, uh, from, India. from Delhi yeah. uh, or Mumbai or wherever. But um, it, there was a remarkable development. I think there's still a lot of people uh, sort of scratching their heads. Um, you know, we do have a very good uh, Indian e economics team at Crystal. DK Joshi is our yes, chief economist there. He fairly quickly uh, took a percentage point of our growth forecast yes. for this fiscal year. Um, it's, you know, uh, Milton Friedman may be turning in his grave <laughs> somewhere thinking about this. Yeah. Um, you know, it's really a self-induced monetary shock, uh, monetary tightening to the economy. Now, clearly, there must have been some very, um, you know, reasons behind it, which have been discussed around the black economy about trying to encourage um, a more uh, a move towards more a digital world. Uh, you know, you have the uh, the Jam program that's been working yes. its way through the system. So, it, maybe it fits into that in some shape or form. But uh, it certainly was something that uh, will go down in the history books as a very bold. Um, and maybe in the short term, a not so edifying monetary experiment. Not so edifying. Uh, we don't have a precedent to, sh to compare this with, just the suddenness with, with mm. which this was done, the lack of notice, the shortage of currency because they hadn't printed notes in advance. Mm. Um, but is there any way to gauge that, is it just that one percentage point as DK Joshi pointed out, or do you think that it will have a longer chronic impact on the mm. Indian economy? Well, I think at the moment we think it's more, a, more of a transitory issue. Um, maybe over the course of a year or so uh, and then the shock should dissipate after that um, so hopefully it will be transitory you do have what uh, economists like to use the fancy term hysteresis <laughs> that when you put the economy on a different path it doesn't always come back uh, you know to to where it would have been there may be some longer lasting effect i mean i think one thing to think about here is given that the government has sprung this on the indian people once um, you know, there will be a concern that maybe it could happen again yes. and again. So there is some potential, uh, even though it may have been done with very good intention, I think one question mark would be, you know, could it start to undermine some of the credibility in the whole monetary system? That would be a longer term concern. Okay. Um, overall, do you think emerging economies are looking like they're in a good spot this year? Or do you think that the return on commodity prices, the currency issue, will mean that the focus will shift, the investment focus will shift, away from emerging economies to the US and maybe other parts of the developed mm. world. Europe is looking a little better now, though we have elections coming mm. up, so nobody knows. Correct, correct. Yeah, no, I think the emerging market outlook is not, is not all that bad. Um, you know, what's good for the US to a certain extent is good for emerging the markets. The well, we do think yeah. growth will, will be stronger this year. Um, yeah, again, the wild card is the, how the, the whole trade debate yes. uh, works its way through. But, uh, you know, I always say about emerging markets, they are emerging. That, is mean, that means they have a lot of growth potential. So the most important thing is really for policymakers to focus on getting their domestic economic house in order. That's good macroeconomic policy, good structural reforms. Um, if those things come through, then th the capital will seek out those higher potential growth rates and higher potential returns. So I wouldn't get too panicky about the fact that, oh, U.S. is stronger, dollar strengthens, capital flows back to the U.S. The U.S. is a very mature economy. It doesn't have the high, the 5, 6, 7 percent, even 8 percent uh, potential growth rates that uh, <laughs> some of the emerging markets have notably uh, India indeed. You know one quick question on India additionally and that is uh, the independence of the RBI. I know that uh, there is some degree of worry now in the US as well about the independence mm. of the Fed. Um, we've had some months where this has been questioned because of the way the RBI played a role in the demonetization process. What are your thoughts on that? Mm. Well I think the, 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 it's a very interesting topic, the whole issue of independence yes. of the central banks. I mean I think that um, in some ways the that whole framework of inflation targeting and sort of delegating macroeconomic 
demand management to an independent technocratic central bank. Uh, the pendulum may be swinging a little bit away from that um, and in the sense that probably we need to look more at um, coordination between the monetary authorities and the fiscal authorities and really ask questions about what is the best way to um, to structure that relationship and I think sometimes there's been too much of a separation independence has gone too far and led to perhaps a lack of coordination between macro the two arms of macroeconomic policy so I'm not too concerned about that erosion of independence per se as long as it's within a framework where um, the government and the central bank have a shared understanding of what the objectives are uh, and what the division of labor is between the, uh, the different entities. For example, in the US case, if you look on the Fed's website, I like to quote this, the Fed, in explaining its independence, says the Fed is independent in the government, it's not independent of the government. government. Okay, fair enough. We've covered several risks. This year, China doesn't seem to be as much of a talking point here. But besides these, do you think that there are going to be any key challenges that the global economy will face in 2017? Well, I think there's enough on the plate to digest that we talked about, and usually... And the, Trump has everybody's <laughs> attention right now. I think it's, it's a big political year. Um, obviously, uh, we've focused on Brexit, but uh, you have a number of elections coming up in the EU uh, this year, starting with France, the Netherlands, yes. and then capping off with Germany, I think it's in September. So um, this is really a big... Uh, it's not just Brexit. Brexit raises a whole lot of questions about what about the EU mm -hmm. itself, um, and how do they need to... Uh, not just deal with Brexit, but also realign and, and, and perhaps develop further their own uh, integration. What is the model going to be for Europe and the EU in the future? So I think that's a, it's a big year in which politics may continue uh, to really drive some of the economic uh, issues and the market as well. But the real things that tend to, to move the needle are the ones that we can't even think about that come left of centre. So, you know, cyber risk, um, you know, other kinds of geopolitical events. Um, you know, would, would certainly uh, be in that category.